Capani is a Parisian ready-to-wear and accessories brand founded by Sebastien Meyer and Arnaud Vallon in 2013. The brand is named after a famous astronomer from the 16th century called Nicolas Copernicus. He was a Polish astronomer and mathematician known as the father of modern astronomy. He was the first European scientist to propose that the Earth and other planets revolve around the Sun, essentially proposing the heliocentric theory of the solar system. Yes, we started off this video really sciencey, but it will make a lot of sense in terms of Coperni's design aesthetic. For Coperni, what we love is to, is to think how we can manage to create new things through technology and the human aspect. So I guess that the, the, the biggest goal for, for us at Coperni and for many people is to link this, the human side and the, and the technological side, because if we, if we find the best way to use both, I guess that we can create so many amazing things. Sebastian Meyer is from a fashion design background and as such, he handles the fashion design, whereas Arnaud has a business background and runs the business operations of Coperni. He previously worked at Balenciaga and Chanel. The two actually met in 2009 at school in Paris, where Meyer studied fashion design and sewing, and Arnaud did business and fashion management. The brand's aesthetic is very minimal and simple, but playful and chic at the same time. They like to mix styles from different eras, but try to have a futuristic edge to whatever they create. Their work is about discovering what's next, in a similar way to Copernicus's obsession with solving problems that would go on to help future scientists. In 2015, Arnaud and Sebastian were appointed creative directors of the historic French brand Courage and they put their brand on pause to focus on this role. When you think about it, it was actually a perfect pairing that they went to Courage. The founder of the brand, André Courage, a legendary fashion designer who learned his craft under the tutelage of Cristobal Balenciaga, created his eponymous house in 1961. Balenciaga was very supportive of him founding his own house and actually helped him finance his first salon. Courage was fascinated with society's love of space and a lot of his designs reflected society's curiosity of all things space. He is well known for space age designs and he is sometimes cited as one of the most copied fashion designers of all time. And even when you look at fashion now, people might not realize but Courage is heavily copied from people like Tom Ford, to all different other brands, you can see the distinct inspiration of Courage across fashion today. For Sebastian and Arnaud, they had a huge task on their hands. They had the goal of trying to revive a house of an innovative designer that a modern fashion audience were not too familiar with. However, it was made easier by the fact that the design philosophies of Coperni and Courage merge in their sort of futuristic aesthetics. In their Courage debut collection, they brought back a lot of André Courage's signatures like the mini skirts, the crop trousers and the space age shapes in a very simple and palatable way. Probably the best way to reintroduce the history of the brand to a new audience. In the collection, there were no complete looks and models wore the same ribbed knit with some of the looks focusing on clothing worn on the upper part of the body and the other focusing on the legs. It was a very commercial collection with each piece being available in multiple different colors and fabric. But despite its commercial nature, it was generally received well. The rest of their Courage collections would follow in this suit, bringing back pared down versions of Courage's design language. However, I think the issue with some of the stuff that they did at Courage was that it was too pared back and it was too pared down. And that is no fault of their own. It's a really, really difficult task to go to a brand that modern people don't really know too much and try to revive it. We've seen executives at Scaparelli try to revive the brand and they flopped until recently when Daniel Rosebery successfully, you know, brought some buzz to the brand. You're essentially competing with brands that kept the longevity and the buzz going. Brands like Chanel, like Gucci, like Louis Vuitton that never really had a massive long break. And so it's just really tough and you are sort of pushed by executives to be really commercial because they're trying to make sure that their investment is well spent. And so sometimes designers that design at these kind of houses 
are very limited on how creative they can be. After two years at Courage, they left the brand and went on to relaunch Caperni in 2018. Sebastian's inspiration points come mainly from art, architecture and technology, and he has even cited Steve Jobs as one of his main role models. It's therefore no surprise that the iPhone inspires so much of his design. The most successful piece in the Caperni world is definitely the swipe bag, and this bag was inspired by Sebastian's research into multiple Apple digital icons. This includes the Wi-Fi symbol, airplane mode, and the swipe button, which specifically inspired the shape of the bag. A lot of the other accessories for the brand follow in a similar idea, with bags that are inspired by the shape of apps. Since the debut of the swipe bag in Caperni's Fall Winter 2019 collection, it has been a hit and has been seen on everyone from Doja Cat to Dua Lipa. Following the same thought process, in their Resort 2021 collection, they presented looks of their typical sculptural and sexy tailoring as iPhone screenshots. And this is exactly a further example of Sebastian Meyer's obsession with iPhones and saying that Steve Jobs is one of his role models. In an interview I watched, he was actually talking about how he can't survive with his iPhone and he takes a lot of inspiration from technology and just things that he uses day to day. The pandemic and various lockdowns across the world gave Sebastian and Arnaud time to reflect on the new role of clothes during the time. As restrictions started to ease up, they presented a collection titled Ready to Care. It was a study on our relationship with our clothes. For this collection, they developed a fabric called C+, which is a jersey fabric that is anti-UV, moisturizes the skin and has antibacterial properties. The collection was divided into acts with parts of the collection focusing on clothing as a form of protection. There were also other parts of the collection that explored our relationship with clothing through the fusion of movement, articulation and comfort. Now with all this understanding of Coperni as a brand and their design aesthetic, their recent Spring Summer 23 collection should make a lot more sense. This collection had technology and futurism plastered all over it, starting from the florals, which were digitally scanned and layered to create lenticular flower prints that bloom as they move. It almost created this appearance of a hologram. Low-rise trousers had the appearance of models flashing their G-strings, and other garments showcased the beauty of underwires, usually seen in the interior of a garment. It was very deconstructivist and Margiela-esque, and this didn't end there. There was a nice short dress I saw in the collection with exo bra pads, and these same bra pads were used as shoulders for the dress. Now, something that I would say is a strong suit for Coperni as a brand is tailoring. Their tailoring is very, very nice most of the time. And in this collection, they showcase a lot of power shoulders on the tailoring. And this really fascinated me because the way that they use power shoulders is really not typical of what you usually see. If we go back in fashion history and we talk about the likes of people like Giorgio Armani or Yves Saint Laurent, the way they used to use power shoulders, they were more so trying to depict women in a very powerful way. But how powerful this is is in the context of the time that they existed. It was a time when Women wearing suits was frowned upon. Women wearing trousers was frowned upon. And so putting women in power shoulders and suits with trousers was seen as really powerful and against the grain and against society. But the way they showcased it is very much in a sexy manner. And I like that because before fashion had too many rules, it was like you had to wear a blazer with trousers or a skirt and you have to wear this with that. And this sort of breaks the rules. It's like, no, we're going to give you power tailoring and these power shoulders but we're gonna put it in a very sexy way in a way that you wouldn't typically associate this clothing to be styled and I really love that it really made me think it made me stop and think when I saw it. Coperni's famous swipe bag came in many forms of course including a version made of real gold that turned many heads. Of course the huge moment that made this collection viral was the spray-on dress worn by Bella Hadid. Bella Hadid took center stage and posed for several minutes as a solution comprising of cellulose was sprayed on her, creating a dress. The dress was further styled and a slit was cut before she showcased the technology across the room. Manuel Torres, the person who created the spray-on material and the company behind the material called Fabricon, which was founded in 2003, stated that this fabric can be washed, reworn, 
or put back into the can and resprayed later. And when I found that information out, I was really happy because when I first saw the spray on dress, the first thing that came into my mind was sustainability and are they just spraying microplastics into the atmosphere? So it's really good to know that. Conceptually, the spray on dress definitely resembles the McQueen Spring Summer 1999 show, where robots that are typically used to spray paint cars were used to paint a dress during the show. Now, of course, this kind of spray on technology is really early in its use forms and its use cases, but I really hope that the press that the company got through this runway show really means that they get more investors and more money is pumped into creating this sort of thing because like he said, it's something that can be rewashed, can be repurposed. You can turn it back into the liquid, into the can to be sprayed later. And it really could create sort of a use case for perfectly fitting dresses and vests and t-shirts because that's an issue that people have when you're buying stuff off the rack. It's made by this pre-sized sizing method. And therefore, if you don't fit into the average sizing, it can be hard to, you know, get things that fit properly. And this could be a really, really good use case of the technology to create clothing that fits right and fits nicely. But I'm sure they'll need more funding to actually make this something that is, you know, more widely used. But I really thought that it was interesting what they did because I saw a lot of people online saying that the spray on dress was a gimmick. And that was really why I wanted to talk about the aesthetic of Coperni and sort of the ideas behind the brand. Because when you think of the fact that Sebastian is heavily inspired by technology and the most famous Coperni bag, which is a swipe bag, is inspired by iPhones, it makes sense that they would use technology. It isn't a gimmick because it makes sense in the context of the brand and the brand philosophy. The brand is literally named after a scientist and the brand is all about futurism, innovation, it's about looking forward and it's about finding ways to innovate but also merging that with technology in a way that's actually usable. And so yeah, it was really, really interesting, the idea of the spray on dress, but I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the spray on dress? Do you think it was a gimmick or do you think it was a very nice and cool fashion moment? Comment down your thoughts below. If you want to support the channel and gain access to my weekly podcast, you can subscribe to my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. And I'll be back with another video very soon.